kick of it for those two. It's still hot. It's still burning hot. Huh? Welcome to the second round of qualifying at the Serbia F1 Futures in Novi Sad, part of the Balkan Summer Swing. The weather continued to be hot and humid, testing the players' physical endurance, not to mention testing the support of any spectators that dare to brave the heat. In the first round, Alex defeated the unranked Milos Dabic in a relatively quick 6-love, six 6-3. Six this time, his opponent was the 20-year-old unranked Shinosuke Hiramatsu from Japan. This was the first time that Alex had played an opponent from Japan since his days on the ITF Junior Tour. Hiramatsu is yet to win his first ATP singles points, although he had qualified for the main draw twice before. His best result in singles came earlier this year, in May, at the Bosnia F1, where he qualified for the main draw before falling to Elmer Ejupovic of Germany. Hiramatsu also had an expeditious first round in which he overtook Pavle Drubnjakovic of Serbia, 6-1, 6-1. Once again, welcome everyone, and today I'd like to answer a very good question that one of you asked after the last video, and that question is, why did we choose to pursue the Futures tournaments in the Balkans, meaning Bulgaria, Turkey, Serbia, and Greece, rather than staying in North America and playing the ones in the United States and Canada? Now, I grew up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and played USTA Junior tournaments, while Alex grew up in Montreal, Canada, and participated in Tennis Canada's junior system up until he was 14 years old, so he could have easily decided to pursue his pro career there if he wanted to. But there are a few very practical reasons why we're at the Futures in the Balkans and not at the ones in North America. One of the biggest reasons why we participate in the Futures tournaments in the Balkans is because of the proximity of all of those tournaments to Bulgaria. When we're not at Futures events, we're based in Sofia, where we have family, and if you look at Sofia's location in relation to the other countries in the Balkans, you'll notice that it only takes a few hours drive until you cross the border into any of the surrounding countries, really. So, let's take our trip to Serbia, for example. The Serbian-Bulgarian border is only 60 kilometers to the northwest of Sofia. And after you cross the border, it takes a little bit less than five hours driving to reach uh, Belgrade, and then just a little bit more than an hour to reach Novi Sad after that. So overall we got to Novi Sad in around 6 hours, which isn't bad at all. And the last 4 tournaments that we were at in Turkey were all in Istanbul. And guess what? Istanbul isn't that far from Sofia either. It's about 525 kilometers away, which translates into a little bit more than 5 hours of driving. Antalya is the other place that we played at in uh, Turkey, and that's definitely further away, but far from unreasonable. I got there for around 55 euros after taking a bus from Sofia to Istanbul, and then uh, hopping on a Pegasus flight at Sabika Gökçen Airport. The other place in the Balkans that we've been to is Heraklion, which is of course in Crete, uh, which is Greece's southernmost island. Now you can't easily get the caravan over with a car, but you can get there and back for 120 euros by plane, approximately, from Sofia, if you don't procrastinate and uh, book your flight on time. The other places that are easily accessible from Bulgaria include Romania and the countries that formerly constituted Yugoslavia. And it's always best if you travel by car, 
But in case you find yourself deprived of the luxury of private transportation, which more, which oftentimes we are, there are plenty of ways you can get around uh, cheaply, with our most used and abused preference being the proverbial bus. And of course, you're not always going to, you're not always guaranteed the most comfortable ride. But if you're going to complain about stuff like that, that every pro has to deal with once in a while, then you're not in the right business. When the tournament locations are that close, and you take the prices of traveling in Eastern Europe into consideration, we've saved thousands of dollars on traveling, which otherwise may have gone up in smoke had we decided to play the futures in the US and Canada, which are often quite far apart from one another, and sometimes hosted in some pretty remote locations, which I find to be quite odd, because in Europe, more often than not, the tournaments are held closer to the bigger cities in a given country. Now it's great to be, uh, to be able to reach all of these places from the comfort of Sofia, but it would be absolutely pointless if these countries didn't host tournaments or only hosted very few. But once again, the Balkans do not disappoint. Let's just take a look at the statistics for the sheer amount of tournaments that were held and are going to be held this year in just Bulgaria and the countries that border it. So first of all, Turkey. 48 tournaments scheduled for 2017. Greece, 10 tournaments. Serbia, 5. Romania, 12. Macedonia, 2. And unfortunately for us, Bulgaria held just one Futures tournament this year. But again, that's a total of uh, 78 Futures tournaments for the Balkans in 2017. In contrast, here are the numbers for, for North America. So the United States was scheduled to host 40 Futures tournaments, while Canada uh, is scheduled to host only 8. That's 30 less Futures tournaments in North America. And what's even worse is if you're just starting and trying to break into the rankings to build confidence, uh, you won't be comforted to know that the competition to get into the tournaments in the US and Canada is just huge. Huge. And there's a good reason why. Consider this. There are 50 countries in Europe, 31 of which contribute to 301 futures tournaments that, that were held and are yet to be held in Europe in 2017. And of those 301 futures tournaments, 78 are held in Bulgaria and the countries that border it. Now, North America as a continent is much larger in terms of area uh, than Europe, and despite the fact that there are much more players in Europe, there's still a ton of players that want to compete at Futures events in North America, and they all have to do so within those 48 tournaments that are held in the US and Canada. That's why occasionally you'll see the ridiculous 128 qualifying draw in the US, particularly in Florida which is, or rather was at one point, regarded as heaven for pro players. I'm not sh sure if it still is. So here's a short summary of why uh, Alex is making his way up the rankings at Futures tournaments in Europe, and in particular in Eastern Europe and the Balkans, instead of the US and Canada. So take the comparative scarcity of opportunities to compete at tournaments in the US and Canada, couple it with the often huge traveling distances that you need to cover to get from tournament to tournament, and then slap the multiplier of the much higher costs of living, training, and traveling in the US and Canada, and what you arrive at is the conclusion that there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to be tossing that much money, resources, and efforts for a seemingly diminished opportunity to achieve the same exact goal that you could be chasing in Europe for a fraction of the price. So what it all comes down to once more is money and opportunities and that's why I think that this is a fantastic time to announce that we're officially opening a Patreon account and we'd be honored if you made a contribution no matter how small every little bit helps to help our cause of explaining the inner workings of professional tennis through our personal experience on the tour. You'd be helping us cover the costs of equipment, traveling, and production. And let us know what you think about our geographical strategy for competing on the tour, 
and we'd love to know what your approach would be or what it is if you're also a player on the door. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. It really means a lot to us, and it'll help us grow the channel. So we'll see you next time for the third and final round of qualifying at the Serbia F1, where Alex took on the fourth seed, Domagoj Bilesko of Croatia. Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way.